All right, so we got my patient here for today. He drove in from... Colorado. Oh, it's a Colorado deal. Colorado deal. Okay. I drove in from Colorado so, just to see Dr. C to get this yeah, done. And that's much appreciated. So how was the drive? It wasn't bad. How long? Uh, 13, 14 hours. Straight through or you stop? We, we straight through. Wow. So I make the analogy a little bit like the, uh, the yeah. yellow brick road, man. Uh -huh. You know, like coming to see the Oz, you know, the guy yeah. behind the curtain. Yeah. And how lucky I have uh, so many people drive in from all over the place. Oh, yeah. And so uh, my patient today is a uh, fun guy. And uh, you're going to hear a lot of him talking, which is kind of cool. He's got a lot to say, right? Oh, yeah, good. Yeah, he's got a lot to say, which is a good thing. So we're going to focus in on really you today cool because people well you know everyone kind of is familiar with me uh-huh but your st your story is what's going to be a resonator right sure it can. because it, it uh, we talked a little bit about weight gain and weight loss and issues like that and how much changes here don't really change they anything don't. You in can, here you can get rid of all of this but you can't touch the chest that's the gland and once i figured that out by watching your videos i immediately got the ball rolling to come down here to get this done and that's cool so Describe your gyno. It's 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 hell. Honestly, you can't go you can't go to the beach. You can't go to the pool. You can't you got to wear specific clothing. You can't wear loose fitting shirts. You can't wear Under Armour shirts. You can't wear golf shirts. You can't do a lot of things that you want to do. And it's like a, it's a it's a prison sentence. It's a jail sentence. You're jail sentence. You're you're behind bars. You're not free. No, that's not good. No, and that's why I'm down here. Like, I, I've got to go see Dr. And how long have you had it? Oh, my goodness. Since my teens. Easily. So, puberty related. Yes. And you've dealt with it for that long. That long. How would you describe your actual physical gynecomastia? Well, I, In other words, not in the head and what it does and doesn't do. How would you describe the shape? How would you describe the physical? Oh, the, uh, they... I don't know. It's just... Like, uh, I know it's gland in there. I know it's gland. And, you know, I'm like, okay, there's the, I see your videos and you're, you're pinching it and the nipple is getting sucked in. Yeah. And it's like, you're like, that's gland. And I'm like, shit, that's all gland. That is all gland right there. Yeah. I'm curious to see what's going to come out so I can put it on the grill and torch the oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, Torch that stuff. You feel it. Oh, yeah. You know this gland. Yeah. And we know it's all through here. Uh-huh. You got a little bit of fullness yeah. laterally, Man, which is really sculpting. So my zone system, uh, zero, one, two, three, four down here. Four yeah. he doesn't really have. A little bit of three. Uh, I mean, two over here. So we're going to kind of sculpt that up nicely. And the real key to his success is the quality of his skin because he's a pretty big case. Uh-huh. Your areola is enlarged because I don't of, care about the shrinking of the areola. They bring that thing down to like a nickel. Yeah, yeah. Care. Well, what, your but your skin, your native skin, will determine. I'm curious on that actually. Well, I think you're going to do really well actually. And you know, it's funny how well what kind of tissue does he have? Well, it's hard to really tell it on is. examination. You feel like you got something. Well, you definitely got something, and it's definitely gyno. We know mm -hmm. that. But whether or not you're gonna have that meaty stuff versus this like fibroglandular stringy stuff. Sure. No matter what, we'll pull it out and I'll show uh, it to you, man. So it's actually kind of cool. What do you have to say to the world in terms of your whole gyno and your whole experience and where you are now? I don't care what it takes to do it. I don't care what you don't have to buy. I don't care if you have to eat beans and rice. I don't care what you have to do. Save the money up, send him a consultation and get it done. Period. It's, it's just important. It's just important. Get your mental well-being back. Right. And, and what's your playbook for that? Playbook. How are you going to get your mental health back? Oh, that's going to take a little bit of time, but new wardrobe, because you'll be able to get whatever shirt you want to get. You'll be able to plan a vacation. You'll be able to go to take a cruise, go scuba diving if you want to. You'll be free. Yeah. So you think it's just going to be like a light switch on and off? You just, you're just done and then you're off? It might take some time. It'll, you, you'll have to train the cycle in your brain. It's like, nope, this cycle is broken. I don't have to think about that anymore. So you can do whatever you want to do. So have you already thought about the other side? Oh, I have, and that's what, keep, that's what, that's what kept the drive going. Kept you motivated. Uh-huh. Good for you. I mean, I'd go to Sam's Club, and it's like, you see a 75-inch 4K for two grand, and it's like, oh, man, I want that.
want that. What do you want more? You want that or do you want that? I want right. that. So you could really start your new life all over exactly. again. Exactly. Good for you. Exactly. Do you have any questions about treatment? Um, sleeping patterns. I was telling, I'm not sure if it was Lacey, Lacey or Rebecca, I was like, because sometimes I sleep in my stomach like this and I can't do that anymore. Not for at least a month. What do you mean? Because of the treatment? Because you can't pick your arms up over your head. Well, I mean, look, it's the, the fun stuff about this. It's You're going to be sore for sure. Yeah. But I don't think it's going to be something terrible. I don't want to break the stitches when you that you put in. And you probably won't. I could tell you that that just based on what I'm seeing right now, I don't think you're going to need a lot of like heavy duty internal flaps. But the question is, I don't know that until we're done. So sure. that's something that we'll take up when we're done. Do whatever you feel is necessary when you're in there. Mm -hmm. If you need to put more flaps for whatever, yeah. do it. To make it nice. To make it nice. Yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah. I don't care. They're, they dissolve after. Yeah. How long How long before they fully dissolve? On the inside, it usually take about two or three months. Oh, that's fine. But you won't even know they're there. You won't even know they're there. No, no, no. I'm wow. just looking forward to looking down and not seeing these damn things here anymore. Yeah, and that's going to happen here that's momentarily, what I'm so that's looking that's, forward that's, to. that's exciting. Mm -hmm. All right, let's rock, huh? Yes. This is infiltration of uh, the solution into the skin and the gyno in all these zones that makes it possible to do the operation. Tumescent infiltration. So it's got a solution of numbing medicine which will work after we're done, actually, because he has anesthesia on board. Some epinephrine to make it less bloody. All right, so if I were to summarize his case in terms of, like, what am I thinking when I see him? It's, he's a big case. He's got a pretty good-sized female-like breast here. So when I see a big case, I'm always thinking it's a bigger case in the sense of what's going to happen to the skin when we're done. Now, there's no question in my mind that I, he doesn't need skin removal or a procedure to cut the skin out and leave scars across his chest. It's a big statement and it's, and it's, a, it's a fundamental statement, but that is an art, getting to the point where you decide who gets skin removal and who doesn't. That's the most primitive sort of first juncture you come when you're analyzing gynecomastia. Most people don't, if you have a history of a uh, 100 pound weight loss or if you have particularly large gynecomastia or saggy tissue, poor skin, you probably need to have the skin removed. But for most of us, it's uh, non-skin removal treatment. And he has pretty good skin. Not the best, but it's pretty good. I, I think he's going to go back nicely. And when I examined him, I didn't feel like he had really um, a bunch of glands. I think what we're going to find here is going to be just like this fibro fatty tissue, which is uh, not going to have like all those big chunks of white uh, glandular material that you see me removing. It's kind of fun. So it doesn't make a difference what it's made out of. It's a mountain and it's caused by something and that something will be removed completely and then we kind of make sure that there's support for the skin in terms of having some underlying fatty tissue that's normal and that's where my flap comes in my internal flap and i came up with that um oh how many years ago i don't know maybe five or six years ago but i probably use it on 80 percent of my cases now it's the proverbial trying to get your cake and eat it too so we want all the gland removed and I want a nice smooth result, Doc. And so what this flap does is it gives us the ability to have our cake and eat it too. I'm using the VASER now. So the VASER is a, it's a system. It's an acronym for a ultrasound device that's a little different than standard ultrasound. And I think it works very nicely in the setting of gynecomastia. And really what's so cool about it is it helps to separate the gynecomastia from the surrounding tissue so I could remove it. Because if I didn't have this, I'd have to go back into the uh, hinteragers or the old ages of having to make an incision here and um, doing a subcutaneous mastectomy. Uh, and I actually answered uh, a nice question by a, a, a YouTuber today, and they were saying, geez, Bob, how, how could you do all that surgery and there's no blood? I mean, there's no vessels. What's going on? Well, part of the 
side effect, if you will, of, or the intended effect, it depends on how you look at it, of the Vaser system is it is, this, it is using uh, heat energy to kind of diminish the blood, okay? It's, it's essentially applying heat to these blood vessels and they're no longer active and that's how we get hemostasis. So really, what was really cool it, about the Vaser is that it allows me to sort of separate the mass from the surrounding tissue and it also gives me hemostasis, which is nice. So I don't need that electrosurgery unit anymore. I remove this without it, which is really nice. It just makes the surgery easier and more consistent and, and that's a big deal. Because part of the mission here is to just make the surgery reproducible, which basically says that, okay, you see me doing it here, but what if you have a different surgeon and they can do the same operation and with the same consistency uh, that I do, and I have learned to do over you know thousands of cases, in which case it's a win-win situation. The, the doc looks good and does a nice job for his patients, and the patients win. So that's sort of one of the legacies I hope that uh, I'll be able to uh, leave everybody with. And so I'm going to do this vaser stuff here until I'm done, which basically doesn't help you in a sense. How well? How long do you do it? It just depends on type of tissue and how big it is. I'm at six minutes now. I mean, based on what I'm feeling here, I have a few more minutes to go uh, before I'm done. And then I'll switch over to traditional liposuction, which basically means a hollow tube that is going to remove um, what I dissolved here. Uh, I'm doing it in a way that I'm getting a whole area because the Gyno here starts at the nipple and then radiates around <clears throat> and it will go down to the underlying deeper structures as well in most cases. And like I said, I don't think he has a lot of gland. He's mostly fibro fatty in nature. His skin is pretty good. Not perfect, but it's pretty good. And so the good thing about that is I'll be able to treat his gynecomastia with minimal incisions, no scars essentially. That's a good thing, not a bad thing. The scars here in most gynecomastia cases hide very well. I mean, I probably, well, 99 or 100% of the cases get the same scars. Tiny one up over here under the arm and the hair, and then a small one at the bottom of the areola. I find that no matter what type of case unless it's a skin removal, I could treat it with those simple incisions. I'm removing the gynecomastia tissue through the incision at the areola. Some people will ask if the vaser system or any kind of power uh, uh, lipo system uh, damages the structures. And the answer to that is pretty much no. I mean, you know, you're gonna have some uh, nerves that are essentially removed in the treatment of the gynecomastia, these sensory nerves that make up the area over here. This procedure, <clears throat> well I should say this probe does not go into the muscle. As much as it may look like it's going somewhere, it, it is not going in the muscle. And one of the great things about being a surgeon is just having that ability to uh, know where things go just by feel and sort of a sixth sense an experience, right? I mean, you know, when you think about a surgeon, they do spent a lot of time doing anatomy. So this really doesn't do harm. Anything can harm <clears throat> if used incorrectly, but if used correctly, this is really not that interesting. And that's a good thing, not a bad thing. I, I comment on uh, smart liposuction only because I've had a lot of patients who've had previous smart liposuction, which is a laser-based system. It's a little bit different. It's less discriminating, less gentle, if you will. It's more of a uh, scorched earth kind of thing where it gets in there and it just, uh, uh, it melts, but at a much more powerful level. And so sometimes you think, you know, more power the better, but really no, because it, it does damage and it creates a lot of scarification. This whole process is uh, sort of a, uh, like what, what am I using to judge how many strokes here and how the, how time it's by feel this hand here is really doing all the work 
uh, in terms of the sensory input. This is actually the working hand. This is the motor. This is just making uh, this traverse through the tissue. But the sensation here is this part here, and I'm feeling sort of the vibrations of where I'm going. And, um, you know, I could feel I'm underneath this mass, and it's still a pretty big sized mass. I mean, this is a pretty big case. You know, we're dealing with this. I can feel the tissues heating up as the time increases too. So I'm at 12 minutes and 20 seconds now, which is getting up there in terms of my time on uh, the individual chest here of his size. And I can feel the heat. Uh, that's a byproduct of the Vaser system, heat. And so I don't want it to get too hot. And things have definitely loosened up. It feels like I, it almost feels like, I don't know, how would you say? It's like there was a structure here, a, a, a rock, and I've been kind of breaking it up with a big old hammer or something. And it's, it's in getting into smaller pieces and it's really not like a definable rock anymore. It's like a, almost like a pile of rocks. And that's going to uh, help me suction out, you know, some of this uh, fluid and some of the fatty tissue and the fibrous tissue in the area. And what I'll be left with is essentially what cannot be suctioned and what has to be removed. The idea that you can just do uh, a gynecomastia with liposuction alone is really non-existent. I mean, it's very rare that a case can be done with liposuction alone. And the reason is, is um, it, remember, it starts underneath the nipple here, and it's almost always some gland in there. And the main complaint is, in a lot of people, is just puffy nipples. So if you don't remove the tissue that is the cause of the problem, I mean, what have you done? Really nothing. It's better, it's smaller, but then you still have puffy nipples. So I think we've dispelled that over the years as well. Okay, so this is what standard liposuction is here. This is the, uh, the cannula. Cannula in this case is five millimeters, which is the diameter. Here's the tubing. It's going to a vacuum pump that's in that machine there. And what I'm doing here is putting a little um, lubaduba on the incision just to reduce the friction. I keep this little lap pad here just to keep the water from running over. And as I insert this in and out, you'll see some uh, of what we call the effluent, which is just a fancy word for whatever's left after I've done what I've done. And it's like creamy, pinky, pinky stuff. Here it is here. And it'll eventually fill up the whole tube and then it's going to go into a uh, little container over there. I expect to get probably about six or 700 cc's off of him, uh, maybe a little bit more. Uh, he's decompressing already, which is nice. I'm sort of working this in a uh, fan-like pattern, or I'm doing it in a way so that it's nice and even, because there is a significant component of the gynecomastia, and then you have the surrounding fat. And remember, I want everything to be smooth, so I'm trying to get everything so it's nice and even. What's important to note in my zone classification system, um, he has a lot of fullness here in zone two, and so I will work this cannula in that zone as well to contour that fat. That is not gynecomastia, that is... That's just fatty tissue. Some people have fatty tissue there that develops just because they gained weight and will go away if they lose the weight. Whereas some people just have fatty tissue in that area because that's where they have fatty tissue and it doesn't really change that much with weight. A little bit, but, but not that much. Remember, I'm always a big stickler about BMI, body mass index. In other words, a ratio of your height to your weight in helping me to help you essentially because if you're overweight I want you to be where your weight needs to be. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a safer procedure done with a much better result. So um, what I'm left here was I could feel this fibrous tissue here but you can see this contour is much better now it's much flatter. Now I'm going to go off to the 
uh, side zone here, making a small incision at the areola border and put a little lube. And yeah, so this is all zone two stuff over here, just fat. You'll see me hammer this. I know it doesn't look gentle. The reason why I don't vaser it over here is that it's really not a huge advantage. It's not fibrousy tissue. It's easily extracted with the liposuction cannula. So it's faster. Um, and that's a big deal in terms of just, it's like it's not necessary to have stronger equipment in this lateral area and the standard technique works just fine. Some people will say that, uh, and I know there's some of the people out there, they're using uh, devices to contract the skin. And I could tell you, and I'll try to keep this as easy as possible, that there's no way there's a device that's gonna contract the skin to any substantial degree that's gonna make a difference in your result. It's called wishful thinking or marketing. Although I'm an optimist and I want everything to be super cool, I can't really say that I'm gonna have a device just because it's gonna contract your skin and save you the skin removal alternative. It doesn't work that way. If it did, I'd have a machine on every corner here, but I don't because they just don't do that. And what I do like to do is be super honest with everybody. I am a doctor after all, and I'm not a marketer. Um, I educate people and I don't want people coming to me thinking that, oh, you know, he has skin retraction because he uses the blah, blah. Well, guess what? Doesn't work. And it, uh, it's disingenuous to tell people it does. Okay, so we're making some nice progress over here. It's bloodier, as you can see. You can see nice skin retraction here already too. Look at this, so this is not looking so bat-wingy, you know, like he's got this big old area over here. He's got a little bit over here. When you treat one area, you gotta remember that one area sits next to another area, so everything has to be done in sort of concert. It's all proportional, has to be smooth. I'm trying to create that lateral V shape, if you will, okay? Lateral chest sculpting. Again, something I have been talking about from my entire career with the AGC. And that's why the zone system is uh, important because it emphasizes the idea that it all has to work together nicely. It's not just one little area. I'm trying to masculinize the chest, which means uh, make it look cooler, more manly. I want to show the, the shape of his pectoralis muscles. He's got them in there. And he's going to lose some weight. And this is going to rock. I'm going to sneak down here into the upper chest, what I call zone four, just to feather it. Because otherwise, it would, I want this to make a nice transition from here to here. He's going to lose weight for sure. But the idea of feathering is just so there's not a step off there. It's just sort of a smooth transition. Oh, the procedure itself doesn't cause a lot of weight loss. My experience is a thousand cc's of fat generally equates to about a pound of weight loss. So, I mean, he may lose two pounds just because of what I've done to his chest, but the real weight loss is going to come from the real deal. So actually we have, I was wrong, he's 900 cc's. So pretty significant amount of uh, fatty tissue. Uh, I'm feeling this area over here. Here's the, the sort of the epicenter of the gyno. I'm going to work that a little harder in my second go around. The idea of this gyno treatment is Sort of the components that I told you, the liposuction, the vaser, the tissue removal, but what I haven't told you is sort of the, the real, you know, kind of nuts and bolts of this procedure 
those are the nuts and bolts, but then the artistic part is, well, how much do you remove, and where do you remove it, and how much do you leave, and, you know, so in other words, how do I get a nice looking chest? That's art. You know, that's sort of been there, seen there, done that a million times, I've learned from there, know how much to take, know much how to leave, um, you know, what's normal, what's not, and, you know, the only way to get to that point is you just got to do a lot, you know, it's just, like anything else in life. And so I'm done when I feel satisfied that this chest is gonna look the best. You know, it's like that movie, The, the Patriot. What do they say in that movie? Aim small, miss small. In other words, just, you know, pay attention to the details. And that's what I'm doing right now. In my finger, I actually have whatever mass is left, which isn't that much, and it's not, not surprising me but it is the gland part, so I have that right here. All the other fat I've kind of contoured. And what I really like now, too, is like, look at the immediate skin retraction, see? See how this has already gone back? Boom, you know? And the areola is gonna get smaller, and it's gonna get even smaller after I remove a little uh, load of tissue. Um, kind of feathering again more. I feel a little high over here. Um, so I'm gonna take that down a little bit. This is the feathering part, okay, boom, I like that. This nice transition coming in from the chest down to his upper abdomen is nice. I feel like I could do a little bit more laterally and a little bit up here in zone three, which I didn't mark before because these other zones were so big that, you know, it, it just made it look small, but after I removed those zones, boom, there's fullness there, which again is proportion. So sometimes I get these laps, wrap my hand, pull the skin over, get down there along the side. And I'm using my hand to not only stabilize the skin, but to really feel where this probe is going. Looking up here in zone three, got my finger way up there in the axilla. I could feel a little pocket of fat. And I'm gonna go up here and just gently feather that. So this is a big case. This is not your ordinary case, that's for sure. This will help me give a little bit uh, better definition of the lateral board of the pectoralis muscle that's coming right through here. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good. Skin's going back pretty good, actually really good, so we got lucky. Got a nice sculpting of the lateral chest wall over here. Um, I have a little bit of fat up on the upper side here and I could use that in my flap. I could feel this tissue in this region over here. So right now we're going to take a break with the suction. I'm going to now do the next step of the operation, which is look for the tissue. I know it's in there, and this is the tricky part in terms of how do you remove this tissue so that everything is copacetic, okay? So this is art too, you know? I want to get it all. But I also want to make sure that it's not depressed, there's no donut or anything else. But I also know that this is the, the, the area where uh, if it's, there's going to be stuff, it's stuff. And yeah, here it is right here. And I'm going to just work around it now. And this is a uh, Stevens scissor, which is a small scissor that's really sharp. It's amazing that... Uh, the best instrument I have for this particular procedure. This is my next best uh, uh, instrument, which is my finger. In which case, I'm sweeping over the top here, separating some of the, I don't know if you can hear that, but uh, separating some of the fibrous attachments. And boom, those are gone. And this is also called tissue undermining too. So for instance, if I want this skin to move up, which is not uncommon, particularly in the larger cases, I'm undermining a bit, not as much as you think, and on a case-by-case -case basis. But again, I, I, I tell everybody, these are the decisions that you make while you're doing this, and again, having been there helps a lot. So uh, that's why I, I sound more self-assured, is because you know I've, I've been done, doing this for a little bit, and uh, I kind of know what to expect, which is nice. That's a nice place to be. You can see the whitest gland here, maybe, maybe you can, I don't know how John's, uh, are you getting close on this, buddy? Mm -hmm. All right, so, I mean, you can see, so there's gland, obviously, there can be some. 
And all this other stuff is what? I don't know. It's gyno for sure. There's some fibrous tissue. There's some attachments in there. There's a bunch of stuff. Um, there's fat. And I'm going to remove what I need to remove, leave what I need to leave, and call it a day. Um, but this is the art part, I will tell you. I mean, if you had never done this before, you know, the docs would be going like, well, how, how much do you take? I mean, do, when do you stop? Yeah, those are all the important things you got to consider as a surgeon. And I'm getting down to the muscle layer. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the tissue that sort of I want out. Okay, that was underneath this area here. And I could see, you know, he still has some some mounds of tissue that's sitting ab above here, okay, that I couldn't contour as nicely as I would have thought with the lipo. So now I'm doing it with my scissor. It's called piecemeal reduction of these tissues. So it's a smooth result, right? So that's just fat. That's all normal fat. And... Uh, Chasing some of this laterally. It gets all slippery and stuff, but here's a little, see there's, there's this load here. That's some tissue I'm going to reduce. And I'm, I'm really kind of liking the contour now. So I'm, get, I'm getting close to where we're almost done on this side. I'm feeling around. This all feels really good. I can feel a little step off right here, which means like this is like a little uh, ledge, if you will, uh, but that's not that interesting. You can see a little, little fullness right here, and that's this. And so, again, I'm just smoothening this out so that there's just not this like step off. And then I'm going to put a stitch, which is my internal flap. Yeah, so I can actually, sometimes I'll take this down with liposuction. Thank you. So this is a suture that I'm going to use here. This is the tissue that I've removed. Um, a little bit of fullness here and over here. You know, can you fire up the liposuction? So uh, I'm going to, instead of doing this piecemeal with the, my scissor in this region here, I'm going to actually use the liposuction just to smooth this out even more, okay? And so I'm using my hand to feel that sort of ledge. And then I'm going to come through here with uh, this liposuction cannula and feather that out. Okay, that was nice. Okay, I feel a little low part right here. So I'm gonna do a little bit down here. Okay, so I'm feeling good. Now I'm gonna put an internal flap, which basically means his muscles right underneath here. He's got this fatty tissue right here, right? So the internal flap technique is just a way of saying, okay, I disrupted this sort of carpet of underlying fatty tissue here, right? And after I took the mass out, there's a depression or a void. So I'm gonna grab some of that normal fatty stuff from above. normal fatty stuff from below so there's no divot or depression right here okay right at the incision there's gonna be normal fat here right which is the key I don't want dermis or skin here sitting down on top of muscle because that's how you can get a, a scar that adheres this will be a uh, freely mobile non-depressed no donut kind of issue, boom, and keeping it masculine at the same time. Again, I still, even though I've done that, I still see a little fullness right here. 
And I'm gonna go back and take out some of this fat. And I know that this may be a little sort of boring for you people who watch, but I'm trying to get it nice, right? I feel good. A little bit of a little bit of poofy here and there, so I'm gonna go back and just make these little adjustments. Because that's the final result and I want it to be nice. This guy drove 16 hours to see me. How lucky am I that he felt compelled to do that. And I want him to be happy. That's nice. Okay. So as I look in here now, I just see uh, fat, which is fine. We want fat. Everybody has fat. What we don't want is to leave any gyno tissue, that's for sure. And I want it to be so that the end point is a positive end point. It still has to look good. I still want him to have a masculine chest. The idea is not to overdo it or underdo it, to do it just right. I'm done. I, I like that. So, um, again, I don't know what you could see from your end, but if I just even come down the line here, he's got this whole mound of stuff, all this lateral fullness, and look at this. This is already like a, a world of a difference, and I can see his pec muscle right through here, which is really nice. Again, I see some normal fatty stuff underneath there, and if you flip the areola over, yeah, hello, there's nothing there. This areola will shrink down. I definitely, not a huge proponent of a perirailer incision. In fact, I, I rarely, if ever, do that. Other surgeons can do whatever they want. I don't do that incision because I just don't believe in it. It, uh, it doesn't really uh, help the situation at all. And, and you don't really need it. Uh, if you're going to do it, you come back as a secondary procedure. And again, I rarely do that. So basically, uh, there you go. That's one side. I have another side to do. Here's all the, the gynecomastia tissue that wasn't able to be treated with the uh, standard liposuction. This is what remains. Here's the glandular compartment here, or uh, part here, I should say. And that's always right underneath the uh, areola. So we're going to venture off and let's do the other side. So now, um, what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to talk a lot. <laughs> and for a long period of time, I guess. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because um, he specifically said to me that he's a big YouTuber. And what he told me is that he just loves the longer videos. <laughs> and uh, God love him, if that's what he likes, that's what he likes, you know. So, um, longer videos just means me just talking. So, so what's the latest in gynecomastia? How about that? Let's talk about that. I think the latest is uh, yet to happen. Personally, I'm working on my next paper. And I'm actually hoping that it'll be submitted for a review in the next week or so. And I only say that because I think that um, for me, my mission is to sort of simplify the diagnosis and treatment of gynecomastia. And that's going to take some time because, you know, everybody has their set ways of doing things and treatment for any medical condition or disease process. Uh, it, it, it's slow changing people, all right? So what we could really tell you is like, well, what, what if you have gynecomastia, what's, what's the best way for you to, to make sure that you're in the best of hands, all right? So I'll tell you that, and he uh, probably told us, I think early in the interview, didn't he talk about what he tried to do himself? Yeah, he did. In other words, it's like, so one day you realize that, oh my God, I actually have something. You kind of know it's odd or something's off. Your friends don't have it. Maybe some people made fun of you or something. And then you put it all together and you're saying, oh my God, it must be my chest, you know? And then you realize that you're different. And you notice that something's different and then you're like, oh my God, you know, who wants to go to the doctor, right? And you go online, you read about all these different cures for gynecomastia and everything, and then you'll have fitness people tell you you could uh, work out 
you have weight loss people tell you that you can lose weight and it'll go away. You have other people that'll tell you that if you take certain uh, pills that uh, it'll go away. Gynecomastia is a condition that is not going to weigh, to go away unless it's formally treated. So you have to have a procedure. You know, we can call it whatever you want, a procedure, surgery, treatment, whatever. But it is something and you're looking at it right now. The thing about this, it's not only the only way to make this go away, but it's actually pretty cool and it works. So instead of fretting over the fact that, oh crap, you know, I have to go get it treated, thank goodness we have something that does treat it, right? Which is kind of nice. You know, one of the other things I hear again all day long, every day, is all the things that people have written about on the internet that are the horror stories, you know, like the, uh, Oh my God, you know, the bad skin results, the asymmetry, the uh, necrosis of the skin and dimpling of the nipples, uneven results. I mean, it goes on and on and on. I hear those, they're real. Um, I feel fortunate that those are not common occurrences at the Austin Gynecomastia Center, that's for sure. Um, and usually those are results that are just happened from inexperienced people that really haven't learned the limits of the procedure or the techniques of the procedure. There is an art and there is a learning curve. And um, when you get it, you get it. And when you don't, you know, you end up with these funkadelic results. So the uh, learning lesson there for you all is that choose your surgeon wisely. You know, and I tell you this, not that I'm the only surgeon that does this. I just say that, you know, have some good before and afters, have a website that proves that, you know, you've been there before and that you sort of bring something to the table, show some expertise and experience. And if you look around, you, you'll come across those people and then you'll come across the uh, people who just copy people. <laughs> <laughs> who do it, you know, and that's sad actually, but the fact of the matter is, you know, always going with a health, healthy level of skepticism in terms of, um, you know, even doctors are uh, not beyond uh, sort of embellishing or exaggerating, you know, experience, um, and there's no loss of uh, confidence and, uh, you know, big talkers out there. So go to people who've been around the block, know what they're doing, uh, who have a proven track record, and uh, that's a good start. I know that a lot of folks can't necessarily afford uh, treatment because it is, you know, not inexpensive. I would tell you that if you go to someone who's relatively inexpensive and you had a good treatment and you're happy, boy, that's, that's the way to go, right? Because it, you aren't out that much money and, and you know you got what you wanted which is a good thing right the problem is is that statistically bad bad things can happen more and now all of a sudden you're in a kind of a box where it's like god you know I spent all this money and and I got this problem or that problem or whatever so I get it you know I'd rather you save your money and go to people that are uh, are good at it okay then venture off and have doohickey surgery that you know you'll have regrets about for the rest of your life don't do that and taking pills and rubbing things into your skin isn't going to change this at all weight loss we know doesn't change it in fact it, it makes it worse because it exaggerates the disproportion if you lose weight you can lose it here but then it doesn't go away here and then all of a sudden it makes your breast your chest look bigger you know so weight loss is sort of it's tough and I, I, you know, I speak to patients all the time and they're like, God, you know, Bob, I, I, I just can't get motivated to go to the gym because, um, you know, no matter what I do, it just really never changes, you know, and then you're wearing who knows what to kind of compress your chest and here you are working out your pec muscle and then all of a sudden working out your pec muscle makes your chest look even worse, okay? So it kind of sucks, you know, I mean, it's like, God, man, 
I don't want to go to the doctor. You know, I don't want to pay for this. I don't want to have any downtime. I just want to take care of it myself. I get you. You know, I get you. But the, the fact is, uh, you know, you're going to be disappointed. And why even go there? Stop, you know, stop dreaming. I mean, it's just, you know, it's a fact. It, it's not going to go anywhere. I mean, do you actually think that that tissue I removed is going to disappear with some, uh, some pill you take? No. Who knows what you're taking, and it could make it worse. Bodybuilders gynecomastia is a big uh, subset of my patients. Okay, I do a lot of bodybuilders. Um, their presentation is different than the, the classic. Classic is, uh, you know, fibroglandular, fibrofatty, you know, some fullness up here in zone one. These bodybuilders, man, they come in and they're, I mean, they're ripped and they got, they got like hardly any body fat and then they got all gland. So they were taking substance. What was my time on the other side? Okay, so uh, I just asked the nurse the time because I'm using time as one input to decide how long to treat this one, this side, okay. Uh, they were pretty similar, look pretty similar. Actually, this may be a little bit bigger, but anyway, you know, I'm using multiple inputs, the time, and then uh, what it feels like. This is the vaser part, okay. This is the ultrasonic liposuction. So that machine, that little blue machine right here, is sending an electric current here, which is then being transmitted into a sound wave, if you will. And this sound wave is energy. And that energy is traveling down this probe and jumping off the end into the tissue that I'm sending it through right now, okay? And that energy, through a process, is disrupting the tissue breaking it up, if you will, okay? And the reason why I don't use standard liposuction in here is because this tissue, gynecomastia tissue in general, is far more fibrous and tough, if you will, compared to fatty tissue off on the side here. And so this vaser system is used to disrupt this tissue, this gynecomastia up front, because it just makes it a lot easier to treat this, okay? And as I told you on the other side, I get hemostasis, I don't need the electrosurgery device. I mean, there's just a lot of benefits. The idea of doing a subcutaneous mastectomy or removing all this tissue just with a, a, you know, a, a, a surgery that uses instruments to remove it like I did in the old days, that's, an, that's tough. I mean, that's, that's a tough operation to get even and stuff. And so this technique that I've devised here, this, this, this like, four-stage approach in my hands just has been able to produce consistent and reliable results. And that's what I want, right? That's what my patients want, right? Consistent, reliable results. There may be other ways to skin the cat, and I've been through them all. Uh, cartilage shavers and, and uh, you know, subcutaneous mastectomy and uh, uh, different forms of ultrasonic energy and uh, what was the time? 1347. Okay, so I feel like I'm getting pretty good here in terms of the loosening up this tissue and making way for its removal, getting underneath this mass. Pretty fibrous, just the way it is on the other side. Tissues are getting hotter. But anyway, I hope that does that answer your question, John. It's just uh, it's it's a system of uh, like a hot knife through butter. And I got a, a more resistant tissue up front here, and I have learned that this works beautifully through here. I'm not the first one to describe it by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, ultrasonic treatment was uh, published in the 1980s. But it never went anywhere. And now there's a resurgence in this whole gynecomastia in part because of uh, some surgeons out there who have done a good job of educating people about it and really using this sort of digital world to spread the word, which is kind of nice. Spread the word. So it was, what was the time? 13.47. All right, we're 13.47. I'm about a minute over, no big deal. feel like it's getting in hotter, but anyway, I'm going to end it here. And then I'm going to switch over. Okay, so this is a... This is what they call a solid probe. So this doesn't have a hole in it. This is a solid probe, okay? 
and the tip is round and firm. There's no suctioning here. This is sticking it in the skin and doing uh, action at the end of this probe over here where you saw me under the skin. And then this is a suction cannula, okay? It is essentially a straw, okay? See? And so it's hollow, these openings, and uh, it's connected to a tube that goes to a suction machine. And basically you stick it in the skin and you suction the fat. So this is the same device, for instance, that you would do uh, body liposuction, for instance, like, uh, you know, reshaping bodies. If I could tell you all a little bit about liposuction, it definitely works. It's a nice procedure, okay? In expert hands, I always say that, but it's important. In expert hands, and I can't underestimate that. It's a nice procedure, it definitely works, but there are areas of the body that you get a better result no matter what. There's areas of the body that you'll get a worse result no matter what almost. And the fact of the matter is, if I were to tell anybody like who's not a candidate, well, probably the two biggest things that stand out in my mind is if you have poor skin and cellulite and loose skin and lax skin, liposuction is not great because after you take the feathers out of that pillow, man, that pillow probably not going to drape down nicely, you know, have lots of creases and and dimples and irregularities and stuff. So you can be smaller, but the contour of your skin may not be that great. Um, the other thing is if you're overweight, and I actually hardly even offer liposuction anymore to people anywhere from, um, because if you're overweight, you're wasting time. Always have to be in your ideal body weight before you have liposuction. And I can't stress that enough. I mean, if you, you know, I'll bet if you submit a, a consultation to me and you tell me you're five foot four, 230 pounds, I'll politely tell you that, look, you know, I hear you, but you're really not a, con a candidate for liposuction. The sad part is if you submit that consultation to a bunch of people, I'll bet you'll get people that say, sure, come on down. Big mistake. And the reason why it's a big mistake is because the solution to being overweight is losing weight, not having liposuction. So liposuction is not for weight loss, okay? Even though it may help with weight loss, it is certainly not uh, the solution for weight loss. And it can create a really bad situation where uh, uh, for want of a better term, fat travel. So let's say, you know, you get liposuction and you're skinnier than you were, let's say, because the doctor removed a lot of fat. But then all of a sudden you gain more weight on top of that. Well, then all of a sudden it can get really weird. Fat travels to different areas and it looks, looks bizarre, disproportional. It's just a bad idea. So. Again, good, good quality skin, and if you're in your BMI, liposuction's okay, for sure. Expert hands. Look here where when I bump up against the, the tissue underneath the nipple, it pulls and tethers the nipple. That's because that's where the tissue starts, and that's where it's stuck. And that's why you have to open up these cases. Don't tell me, you know, what's the problem with opening. It's a tiny incision. What's the big deal? And most people have puffy nipples. If you don't open it up, you're still going to have puffy nipples. And so the side area here uh, is zone two and three. Put a little bit of goop. And we know there's a fair amount of this that exists because we already did the other side. And you can see this on his pictures, right, John? Can't you? Yeah, yeah. And so this is what's going to give him more of that V-cut, upper chest, you know, that cooler chest, side definition, chest definition. Zone two and zone three. A little bit of zone four. And the reason why I kind of push my own classification system here is because the other classification systems were really uh, how would you say, they were studied 
with the intent of determining the type of treatment that you would get depending on your classification, right? But there's anything I've proved is that everyone's treated the same. It doesn't make a difference what you have. So therefore the treatment is focused on where you treat. Fundamentally a little different. Treatment's the same. What you've just seen me do now is the same thing I do for just about everybody. Except for skin removal, which is a whole nother ball of wax. And so how big your chest is, the type of tissue that you think you have, which I've already proven is hard to tell what the heck you have. I have trouble telling what you have. And I've been around this stuff a fair amount. Um, the degree of ptosis, which is like the sagging. I mean, all, all those kind of help a little bit in some way, but it doesn't really decide the type of treatment other than whether I'm going to cut out skin or not. So therefore, the whole premise is that I'm, I'm directing uh, uh, the surgeon to the area of treatment and it also helps in communication so that when you're you know online or visiting with a doc you're talking about the same thing so yeah like doc I got some fullness up front over here in zone one or I have puffy nipples zone zero and, but I have this stuff underneath the side of my arms zone three so I have this this uh, fatty stuff up up over here up the apex you know, by the lateral border of the pectoralis major muscle, that's zone four, I mean, uh, zone uh, three. It helps direct treatment. So you're on the same page. So it helps with communication. And when I dictate his operative note, is exactly what I'm gonna do as well. I'm like, okay, I describe what I have, with the fullness he had, I just describe the tissue that he had, the type of tissue, and uh, describe what I did, so that there's a record. So. If somebody wants to scrutinize my results or uh, help me out, if I you know, had an imperfect result, it'll give them a better idea of what's going on. You could see this demarcation over here where the gynecomastia actually exists. That's just this funky tissue right here. Gynecomastia tissue is real and it's always centered at that nipple areola complex and it's different than the surrounding tissue. I'm feathering down over here in zone four, again, to make a nice, smooth transition. Smooth transition means I don't want like a, a shelf or a step off, okay? A stair step, I want it to be smooth. So I'm doing a little bit of feathering in that area here, coming back to the main area, because I know I still have some gynecomastia stuff here. I'm essentially removing as much of the fatty component that is something I could suction, and whatever's left I'm going to remove through that small incision at the areola. And you can see slowly but surely, this side's starting to look like this side, right? There's two sides, right? Again, I can see this tissue moving here. See this? And I'll, I'll have to remember to get that. Um, I feel like he's got more on the side I have to go after. How much uh, we got? So I'm also tracking how much fat I've removed, as well as feeling it and seeing it, right? Using my senses and other data to decide the end point when I'm done. You could tell him. You could tell him out of breath a little bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's well, it's freaking hot in here. That's for damn sure. But it's because I'm working. This is labor, labor of love, but it's labor. I got to be more careful up here in zone three because you're getting closer to the axilla, which has uh, nerves vessels, lymphatics, important stuff. Surgeons know anatomy, folks. Other docs may have taken an anatomy class, but they don't live and eat anatomy the way we do. That's why I trust surgeons when it comes to taking a probe and moving it around the body. OK, 
getting closer, but you see this here, right? Can you see that, John? You see? Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, see this? this, this that's, uh, that's tissue underneath there that I've been sucking, and guess what? Nothing's happening, right? So that's telling me that, okay, well, I can't remove that. It's actually, it's coming right to here. I can see it starting here, and it's going this way. So I'm going to go back, see if I can get that in my hand. Work it a little bit more. Here it is here. You know, for all you people that like these long videos and like what I'm doing, if, if you're concentrating on anything, this is the art, right? Okay, I'm trying to get this result smooth and even. So, for me, this is just reflex, okay? This is what I'm doing because I've done this a lot, all right? And now I'm going to take a break. So I'm pestering our videographer just to make sure he tries to capture this. So you see how when I pull this, then that gets smaller because now I'm dealing with a gynecomastia. So this is the tissue, all right? It's, uh, it's stuck. See this white stuff? All this, this is gyno. Well, what's left, actually, after all the treatment I've done, okay? And so I'm pulling this out and as I told you, it starts underneath that nipple. So after I've loosened it up a little bit, I'm coming right underneath the um, nipple areola complex. Now, again, I apologize if I sound redundant because at some juncture I have to be, but you know, if your surgeon is telling you they're leaving some stuff underneath there so they don't have a depression, well, guess what they're leaving? this all right this and this this is the cause of puffy nipples and if you don't remove it then you're still going to have puffiness so there is a way to have your cake and eat it too in terms of doing the procedure so you have complete removal of the tissue and no donuts or depressions or deformities and all that kind of stuff okay so if there's any take-home message, it can be done. And that's one of the sort of lessons I hope to share with my colleagues. Um, and the idea of the internal flap technique is actually how we are able to achieve that result. Because before then, you'd either have to leave some stuff in there or take out so much stuff that, you know, it looked kind of overdone. Um, so there's our first, you can see the white, that's the meat. And I could see that that's better, but I still have this, this stuff over here that's annoying me. And I'm going to find it because it is there, right here. Boom, look at that. Oop. And it gets slippery. <sighs> so... Uh, And you know, maybe I've been doing this too long that I'm just like la di da with knowing a lot of this, but it's stuff that I've learned, you know? It's, uh, you know, what I'm doing right now, like, like, what the heck, you know? Well, you know, this is an area that didn't come out with the liposuction, and now I have to go after it, right? And if I didn't go after it, then I'd leave it there. And if I didn't leave it there, then you go back to the doctor, and, well, it's just swelling, it'll go away. No, man, it ain't swelling, it's just stuff. It's still there. And I say this not to disparage other doctors. I say this just, it's, a, it's just reality, okay? It's okay. We don't have to, this is a tough little procedure to get it right, particularly on tougher cases. And so um, I'm trying to teach you all so that you get the best result possible. It's your chest. You want it nice, right? I get it. I can get it. You'd think I should have been able to suction this because it looks like fatty tissue, and it is, but I could have been more aggressive. But, you know, sometimes I just like to go back and forth. So we're getting closer, which is nicer. I still have a glob of something here that's still annoying me. Here it is. 
every time I fish it to the top, it just goes back. So I'll try again. Here it is. Oh, there, got a better bite. Oh, look at that. It's like having a fish on the line and then you lost them. Hate when that happens. Fish stories, right? But, um, get this out of here. And all of that is a gland? No, this is, this is really just fat. Gland is the, the white stuff, you know. This is just some of the fat that's associated with this lateral gynecomastia there. Okay, so that's much better there. So that contour is pretty darn nice. Another area right here. Mm -hmm. Boom. And so I make a strong case that, you know, it's this little stuff I'm doing right now that's going to make sure he has a nice result. You know, look, I never do this case of this magnitude, and this guy's going to have the, you know, most amazing chest you've ever seen in your life. I could tell you that it's, they're never perfect. I mean, I guess some are, but I dare say that the ones that are perfect are the ones that were pretty perfect to begin with, right? But in his case, I mean, this is the big old case, and your expectations have to be in line with reality, you know, and I think his are. I could feel this way out over here. Um, which is a good thing because as long as your expectations are realistic, you get a nice result. Okay. So uh, if you notice, my nurse is in here helping me out more. Her bum took off and is leaving me to fend for myself, which is fine. Okay, so that's good too. Again, I see a little bit of fullness right here, nothing major. I'm actually going to go, and I can feel a little step off over here. So at this juncture, I'm going to go back in and do some liposuction. Okay, this is the, t the tissue. You fire up that machine. Mm -hmm. And I have a little bit up here in the uh, anterior axillary fold right here. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, I'm getting closer. I see little things here and there that I'm going to work on. Um, and we're going to get them. And then I'm going to be done. So again, I'm gonna smooth out this upper part here so it's a nice transition, okay? I want it smooth. And there's that, there's the smoothing stuff, okay? Boom, that's nice. Down here feels nice, this looks pretty good. I have this little area right here and this area here, so I'm gonna go this way over here, wrap my hand here, Stabilize that tissue. Get that little bitty up on the edge of the muscle. Nice. Oh, yeah. Lots of little things I'm doing with my hand. I'm stretching the skin so that I can get this in. Oh, that's nice. Again, I see this no annoying uh, fullness right here. So I'm going to see if I get it from here. Oh boy. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Leave, the, leave that on. Now I still think I have to go back with my uh, scissor and my forcep because this is a little something right here. I can feel it. Boom. And here it is. So again, this just created a little bit of a step off. So I'm going to break it up a little bit. And when you're also doing your massage after surgery, this will help level that out too. Okay, boom. That made a nice difference, okay? I could still feel one little doohickey right up here. You good with the machine? Uh, I'd leave it on for just a minute. I think I might want to go get one more pass through there. Okay, so we're kind of bringing this case home like we did on the other side here. Now I'm going to end it up as I typically do with uh, an internal flap technique. Um, I'm going to make this a little smaller. And I remind everyone, this is not gyno. This is just what's left, normal tissue. 
Okay. So we got that smaller. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of this lower flap. I'm looking above. I've got that other flap here. Because there's a gap here between these two. And so that could seal down and cause a little scar, sort of depression, dimple, crease, whatever. I don't want that to happen. I don't want to donuts or anything like that. So there's an even layer of tissue that remains. Okay, so once I put that stitch in, I push down here. No depression, liking what I'm seeing. If anything, that's up a little bit right here. So I'm going to go back. When you pull these flaps together, sometimes it causes a little up. And that's right here. Voila, we are done. All right, I'm gonna close up the skin here with a little uh, chromic suture. What you just saw was the long-winded version of Dr. C, for sure. And we did it uh, for that reason, because it just worked out for that reason. But it was just me sort of rambling in a low, monotone fashion, which is, which is kind of cool, because some people like the different version of me, which is, which is understandable, because I'm not the same every day. Um, I hope that there was some learning elements in that, because it was an interesting case in the sense it had a lot of sort of attributes of different types of gyno in the sense of the zones and the type of tissue that he had and the quality of his skin and immediate skin retraction and going back and trying to make it right and really working to sort of achieve this objective that that has been done by by a person me who has done you know about 4,000 of these now so um, so why do I say that I don't know I mean a lot of this I don't even think about right I'm just doing it so I think that, you know, I, as a surgeon, love to admire other surgeons when they're sort of in their zone, you know, because it is a zone thing. And it's like, well, you know, what are they doing now? What are they doing now? Because, you know, I've observed other surgeons with different techniques during my whole career, not necessarily with just gynecomastia. In fact, nobody with gynecomastia. That's not something I ever observed. But with other techniques, noses and faces and all this kind of stuff. And really what I like to do is sit there long enough where I realize that, oh my God, this is kind of boring. It's the same thing I do, blah, blah, blah. But then there's always something you pick up on and you say to yourself, ah, you know, you can see how that contributes to the result that you think that they're getting that is, that is worthy of uh, getting yourself. Anyway, again, long-winded version. Hopefully, hopefully you gain something with this uh, so far. He's gonna go home and recuperate. And then we're going to pick this up tomorrow morning and we're going to be just listening, okay? What does he have to say? What, what is his uh, pain level? I mean, is he walking in, writhing in pain? How bruised is he? Um, how swollen is he? What's his reaction to seeing himself for the first time with an entirely different chest? I know, I don't know. I mean, it, it, you know, taking the garment down and kind of catching this all is kind of interesting. And then really, from a different perspective, you've seen this video, so you might want to capture him on his own sort of deal and then compare sort of what he has portrayed in his video with what we did.
I don't know, could be kind of cool. You know, maybe they'll match, maybe they won't. Or the whole idea is it's different perception, right? Hey, this is my world here. That's his world coming in, driving how many miles, 1,300 miles from, from somewhere else to have his stuff done that, he, that he's all excited about and how privileged I am to take care of him and how cool is that, you know? And anyway, let's just see how this all matches up and we're gonna pick up with you tomorrow.